So I thought I'd start this vlog at the end. Obviously, I am home. I had gotten back a couple days ago and I was going through my footage from Nam. If you haven't seen, this is actually considered part two of my little adventure that I had. Um, we did a recording workshop at Sweetwater where I got to play session guitars there and it was awesome. If you haven't seen that vlog, I'll link it below. And now this is supposed to be part two to that where I flew out at 6 a.m. from Indiana to California in hopes to make it in time for the NAMM show. I go every year, I haven't missed a year since 2015 or so. And I look forward to it every year, seeing all my old friends, meeting new ones. So I was really excited to get out there for the Saturday and the Sunday because it always runs from Thursday to Sunday. Little did I know, after booking the trip, there's no Sunday NAMM show. So I was hoping with everything that I had that I would get there at a decent time on Saturday. My flight was supposed to land at noon and then I'd have a few hours. Oh, I'm sorry, are you bored? Okay, you, you got my back. So I was hoping to land at noon, have a few hours there, and then that was gonna be it, try to find something to do for the Sunday. As usual, nothing went as planned. And when I was going through the footage, I, I just didn't have enough for a vlog because I was just so furious, pissed off, and angry because my first flight was no problem. I went from Indiana to Dallas, no problem. Then I get on my plane, we're on time. I'm like, this is great. Okay, I guess Audrey's bored of the story. Oh no, you wanted a stick? Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, now that you have something to do. So I get on the plane from Dallas to Anaheim and I sit on the runway for over two hours when I don't have that type of time to, to waste. So this really pissed me off more than anything is that the, you know, the pilot says, oh, well, there's something wrong with the plane, needs maintenance, one of, the, one of the lights are going off, so we have to get service. Okay, whatever, so we sit there. He's like, yeah, it'll be about 40 minutes. Winds up taking over an hour. Then he comes on the loudspeaker and he's like, all right, good news, everybody, the maintenance work is done. So everybody's like, yeah, good, we're finally getting going, but now, the paperwork is gonna take an additional 40 minutes. And this was at the point this was the point where I had given up all hope and I was just like in the most sour, worst mood because I thought I was gonna literally fly to California for no reason. So eventually that flight got off the ground. Um, I landed in Anaheim. I went right to my phone for Uber and I got on an Uber and I went right to the convention center, checked into the hotel, got my badge, flew in. I wound up getting into the convention at about two o'clock, a little bit after two o'clock, and it closed at five. So if you've ever been to Nam, it's enormous and it's, it's very hard to do in a couple of hours. But I did manage to get everything I needed to do and I'm gonna show you a couple of clips of the highlights for me of cool things that I saw. So first off, I had stopped by the Ultimate Ears booth. Uh, most of our shows are done in ears. So it was really cool to stop by the, oh, sun's coming out, that's nice. Oh yeah, the sun's a little bit bright now. Now it's a nice warm day. So normally I use in-ears for most of our shows. So I had been looking for a new in-ear company to work with and I got a great meeting with Ultimate Ears so I got to do my cool scan. Take a look at this. Look at this whole scanning process that they do. It was really cool. I, I like it, I'll take it. And what's happening here is it's almost like a, like it felt like an ear thermometer. Like they, they don't go in at all. Um, previous ones I've done the foam where they like stick the, in, the needle in and they put the foam in and then they pull the foam out but this was like fully digital. And you could see him drawing my ear shape, which was pretty cool. I'm glad it wasn't disgusting and I didn't have like a, a cockroach in there or something. So that was really cool. Um, really looking forward to putting out some content with them moving forward in the future and hopefully I get um, a pair of them for our tour of Europe in a couple of weeks. UE is launching their new Premiere, which is a 21 driver. IEM, that is probably the most advanced and crazy sounding in-ears I've ever tried. They had the generic buds there, and I was listening to music that I've played on, stuff that I'm like really super, super familiar with from the writing process to the recording process. And I have to say, like, just putting these in my, in the buds, like not even the custom molds, was some of the most unbelievable audio that I've ever heard. I never quite heard our music played like that. It was it was bizarre. It was almost like you could pick out every individual thing in the mix. And like, if you told your head to hit mute on something, you would be able to isolate that sound. 
It's like listening to the snare drum. You could literally pick out the snare drum so clearly. It, it blew me away. They had a great demonstration, a great demo, like a charcuterie board full of the 21 drivers and explained what each one does. Um, I'll put links to that below. It was really, really crazy advanced. And hopefully I get a pair of those to get a review and use them on the road. And um, I'll keep you guys updated on that as that develops. But hopefully you see me with a pair of those this summer. I also got to see my friends at Warm Audio and the new equipment that they have. Um, really cool stuff. The Tube Mic Pre that they just came out with looks really cool. And I'm sure it sounds phenomenal. Maybe I'll get to try one of those eventually too. And then kind of the main relevant event of you know my visitation and something that probably my viewers are most interested in is I stopped by the Neural DSP booth to kind of pry and ask a bunch of questions. So the people at Neural D DSP came up with a desktop editor for the Quad Cortex, which has long been requested. Then I went to the desktop editor, as you can see here on the screen. It looks really cool. I mean, it seems like it's really well thought out. It didn't feel foreign to me at all. Everything on it felt natural, easy to use, and it was really intuitive. Um, the knobs being turned in real time were seamless. There was no gap. There was no lag, no latency from unit to desktop. So I did it both ways where I was dragging the knob up and down to change a parameter and filming the, the board. As you can see, those are in sync and then turning the knob is in sync with the desktop editor all happening in real time. So one of the biggest downers for me is, you know, they, they announced this. It's great that it's happening. I'm really stoked about it. I'm really happy with it, but there's no definite timetable yet. There's no, I mean, I don't blame them for, for not giving a timeline because things go wrong, stuff happens, but it seems like it's still at least two firmwares away, I believe. Um, we should be getting one soon and then probably one after that before the, um, before the desktop editor comes out. So it's still gonna be quite a while, but um, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be anytime soon, which is the famous word that everybody uses, but it's not gonna be very soon. And one other thing that I was kind of upset with and bothered by still, I asked the million dollar question of why can't we go from row one to row two? Why can't we just go to the output of row one and set it to row two and just have the two rows be one signal chain? And the answer I got was, oh, well, you could split the path. I, I know I could split the path and do it, but that's annoying. Why do we have to do that? That's one thing that's irked me always with this thing. Every other unit can do that. Why is it weird to, to ask to go to the second row instead of having to go row one to row three? I don't get why that's not something that's being fixed and that's not something that's even being considered. When I brought the idea up, it was almost like, like, really? Why would you want to do that? But I, mean, I don't know, maybe I'm alone. If you're with me on that one, let me know in the comments because it drives me nuts that I have to add a split and a merge block just to use the second row. But yeah, that pretty much did it for my for my NAM experience. I literally had such a brevi abbreviated limited time. I got to do what I needed to do and I didn't really get to do anything extracurricular. I did get to visit my friends at RCF Speakers who make the best PA systems, the best FRFR for your modeling units if you're looking into that thing. Um, I'll put RCF links below. Definitely check out the NX12 SMA. It's the best monitor for your modelers. Um, I got to stop by Royer, um, who make the best ribbon mics. Another highlight was going up to the private suite of iconic guitars. You guys watch my videos. I've gotten a ton of videos with uh, my iconic guitars. They just announced their new La Playa, which is their take on LP style guitar. And one cool thing was that Danish Pete was there or came up and I got to film a little bit of an interview with him and Kevin Proctor, the owner of Iconic Guitars. So it was great to connect with Pete. We're gonna try to do something over there when we're in the UK. We'll be in the UK in July this year. So I'm hoping to link up with Pete and maybe we're gonna do some form of content out there. That'd be a lot of fun to do. But you gotta check out these new models. They were some of the best playing guitars that I've ever played in my life. Um, hopefully, I wind up with one eventually, but that La Playa series is really something special as you can see in the pictures here. So definitely go check those out. And then the next day was a completely unexpected turn. Um, I've been following the Studio Musician Academy podcast for a long time, run by Sean Giovanni, who owns the record shop studio in Nashville. And he had seen my email on the media list and just reached out and said, hey, I'm doing a panel. Hopefully you can stop by. 
I unfortunately could only make 10 minutes of it because I had such a limited amount of time. Then he was kind enough to invite me the next day to check out some indie car racing, which I had never been a part of, and he had gotten an extra all access badge, asked me to come check it out. So wound up spending the day with him and Zach Hall, who I believe is his engineer at the studio. And we just got to do so much cool stuff. We went out on a boat early in the morning and got to see some dolphins swimming around, which was really cool. And then we went to IndyCar race, which was awesome. I'd never been a part of that before. I had been to NASCAR, but this was also really cool getting to see all the different you know, cars racing by. We got to pretty much go wherever we wanted. So it was really awesome seeing that up close, seeing the speed and seeing the precision that these guys have to drive with. Uh, it was really impressive. And then after that, we went to Huntington Beach where I got this hoodie because it was absolutely freezing. And um, we had a nice dinner on the boardwalk, got to see the sunset on the West Coast. Uh, it was awesome. It was such a great day. Great connecting with, with Gio and Zach and just hanging out all day. So my Sunday wound up being a hectic day, but also very fun. And then you can imagine by the time I got home, I was totally shot. Um, I'm still kind of recovering now because it was just such a long weekend. But I had a great time. Um, glad to be home though. I wish I got to stay at NAM for a couple more days and really experience everything else. But I think I got everything that was needed done. And um, yeah, here's looking forward and then we'll be back there in January and get to do it all again. If you have any questions about anything that you saw on the vlog, let me know in the comments below. And if you made it this far into the video, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. You wanna say anything before you go, Audrey? Nah, she's out.